So this is a video looking at the posterior compartment of the lower leg. So specifically, we're going to have a look at the tibialis posterior tendon, but specifically the muscle in the calf. We're gonna have a look at the flexor digitorum muscle, and we're gonna have a look at the flexor hallucis muscle sitting deep to soleus and the medial head of gastrox. Now, when we look at trying to identify this, this is quite similar to a number of regions, for example, the hamstrings. If we immediately put our probe onto the calf region, it's quite difficult to start to identify which muscle groups are which and which tendons belong to which muscles. So what I'm going to suggest is we start off in that region of the tarsal tunnel. We can reduce our depth on our image as a result of that, but it means we can see the tendons very clearly. At this point, we know uh, that we've got the tendons of tib post here, we've got the flexor digitorum, we've got the posterior tibial artery, the posterior tibial nerve, and we've got FHL in here, excuse my writing. As we then start to move up, we can start to focus in on following some of those tendons as they become muscular tendinous and then become muscles. Now, what's of interest is you'll note, if we use the cursor here, that the digitorum actually starts to move over the top of tibialis posterior and start to come round and head towards line further across onto the tibial shaft. So this is the tibia here. We've got the flexor digitorum that has moved across, and this is the remaining tibialis posterior tendon here. And we're gonna reduce or increase our depth and also the width of the image at this point. So now we start to see the formation of muscle, and we know now that this is flexor digitorum sitting most anteromedially here. This is the tibia. We can see our posterior tibial artery, which is a nice landmark. And we then know that underneath this, we've got our tibialis posterior, and this is the tibialis posterior tendon, which we can then follow back down into that tarsal tunnel region nice and accurately. So we follow it up, we see digitorum go over the top, and we see tibialis posterior now merging into its muscle here, deep to the artery and the tibial nerve. If we come over a little bit more laterally, we start to see the outline of the fibula in the deep part of the image. And we can also see the FHL muscle, which is a large muscle sitting quite centrally uh, underneath the soleus. And as we start to come up, you can follow its central tendon here as it thins out and it starts to spread out and become quite a significant muscle in the posterior calf. Here at this point now, we have the tibia, the fibula, FHL taking up the majority of that space with tibialis posterior adjacent to it here. And as we run back down, you'll start to see that formation of FHL. And if we ask the patient to wiggle their big toe at that point, you can see that beautifully moving. We know then from our previous lectures that we've got the soleus and the start of the formation of the Achilles tendon at this point. If we keep coming down, the Achilles shrinks, the soleus is present, we see FHL also shrinking in. We have to just roll our probe around a little bit more medial to see this nicely and to make sure we're not getting an isotropy. We see the tendon starting to form here, the remaining FHL muscle belly. As we start to come into that medial ankle region, still got FHL here and we can get the patient to wiggle their toe again at this point. You can see it very clearly. There's your tibial nerve, there's your posterior tibial artery. And then we've got digitorum and posterior tip post tendon. So that is how we find that classic view of the posterior aspect of the calf, the deep posterior compartment of the calf. We've got digitorum, tip post, artery, nerve, soleus, Achilles aponeurosis, roll the probe round, fibula, and the FHL muscle above it as well.